Hello students, myself Ganesh B. Aglave, working as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, Valchini Institute of Technology, Solapur. In this session, we will see second law of thermodynamics, learning outcomes. <coughs> At the end of the session, students will be able to describe Kelvin Planck statement and also the second statement is also there, we will be able to describe Clausius statement. Now, as uh, uh, we have studied in the once again the in the uh, BME of uh, first year of engineering, that is first law of thermodynamics. Now we have the second law of thermodynamics, and in the second law of thermodynamics, uh, there are two statements. That the first one is the Kelvin Planck, and the second Clausius. Uh, we'll see one by one. So first statement, Kelvin Planck statement. It, uh, it states that, Kelvin Planck states that it is impossible for any system to operate in a thermodynamic cycle and deliver a net amount of energy by work to its surrounding while receiving energy by heat transfer from a single thermal reservoir. I will make it simple. So, consider this is the thermal energy reservoir thermal energy reservoir try to recall the concept of thermal energy reservoir yes so in thermodynamics the thermal energy reservoirs are the systems which has infinite amount of heat and the temperature remains a constant suppose you take Q amount of heat, maybe 1 lakh, 2 lakh kilojoule. After taking that much amount of high amount of heat, the temperature of that system does not change. Okay, So, that is the definition, simple definition of the thermal energy reservoir. So, as per the Kelvin Planck statement, a single thermal energy reservoir is there and this is the machine. Now, it is not possible it is not possible to convert the supplied heat that is Q into equal amount W into equal amount of work done. It is not possible as per the Kelvin Planck statement. Then when it will become possible, we will see. So to make it possible, what I will do? What I will do? Consider there are two thermal energy reservoirs. There are two thermal energy reservoirs. Getting? And uh, there is one machine taking the QS amount of or Q1 amount of heat. Suppose this is the Q1 while developing the W amount of work. This is the W amount of work. Whereas there is rejection, whereas they, there is rejection. Suppose this rejection is Q2. Are you getting? So, as per the Kelvin Planck statement, if such systems are not possible practically, then to make it a practicable, practicable system, this system should reject the some amount of heat into the another thermal energy reservoir. So, <coughs> here the T1, suppose the high temperature energy reservoir is at T1 temperature and the low temperature energy reservoir is at uh, T2 temperature where T1 is greater than T2. Then the output is the work done. Now, this is the system which will obey the Kelvin Planck statement. So all the IC engines, all the IC engines are absorbing the Q1 amount of heat from the high temperature energy reservoir, whereas they are developing the work done. The work done is available at the crankshaft in terms of the brake power and the heat rejection is through the silencer for the engine. So all 
IC engines follows the Kelvin Planck statement. This is the in very simple language. Okay. Now, the effectiveness of uh, such type of engines are measured in terms of the efficiency. Okay. So, efficiency of the engines will be equal to the efficiency of the engine will be equal to so efficiency of uh, the engine engine will be equal to the ratio of output to input that is q1 now as we have seen this was the thermal energy reservoir this was the lower thermal energy reservoir and this was your machine okay so this was q1 this was q2 then I can write Q W as uh, Q1 minus Q2, which uh, can be substituted instead of W in the numerator. So it becomes Q1 minus Q2 by Q1. Okay. Now we can also replace the heat by the temperature by thermal thermodynamic scale temperature scale. So this becomes T1 minus T2 by T1. So for any numericals on the engine engine you can use uh, these uh, three relations if w is given and q is given you could get the heat i or only heat supplied heat rejected is given also eta uh, efficiency can be obtained and the temperatures but remember the carnot efficiency Carnot efficiency is the function of temperature only. That's why the maximum possible efficiency for any engine is Carnot efficiency, which is the ratio of a temperature only. Ratio of temperature only. Now we will move to the second statement. Clausius statement. So Clausius states that. It is impossible for any system to operate in such a way that the sole result would be an energy transfer by heat from a cooler to a hotter body. Okay. So as per the Clausius statement, if the system is working between hot and cold thermal energy reservoirs, then the flow of energy from cold thermal energy reservoir to hot thermal energy reservoir on its own is not possible. The reverse is possible. So what is that? As per the Clausius statement, as per the Clausius statement, we could, we could transfer the energy from, from low temperature energy reservoir to high temperature energy reservoir by using external agency that is external work now all refrigerators and heat engines follows the Clausius statement now here the suppose the aim of this uh, machine or the system is to absorb the q2 from low temperature then that you take in the numerator. Now to achieve this Q2, the work done is a W. For the engine, the ratio of high grade energy to the low grade energy. Now here, if we want to find the effectiveness of such type of the machine, then we can't use eta term. So as per ASHRAE, there is coefficient of a performance parameter is there. And the system which is doing this is called refrigerator. So all refrigerators absorb the heat from low temperature energy reservoir whereas deliver it to the high temperature energy reservoir by consuming work done. Okay. So this is called coefficient of performance of the refrigerator. Once again we could replace a W in terms of the in terms of C A the W Q1 is nothing but now W plus Q2. So what I can do now? I can write Q1 minus Q2. 
and also I could replace the Q by temperature so it becomes T2 divided by T1 minus T2. Once again for the numericals on the refrigerators you could use uh, only this one relation and once again this is known as coefficient of performance of the Carmat which is maximum maximum COP theoretical maximum COP. So in this fashion we have seen the Kelvin Planck statement which is uh, applicable for the engine and uh, refrigerator works on the Clausius statement. For any further study you can refer fundamentals of thermodynamics by Boranke Sontag and fundamentals of engineering thermodynamics by Moran and Shapiro. Thank you.